Thank you very much for coming out for our um, Employer Industry Day. Uh, the cyber uh, security program here at Merit, we're in our second year. And um, we're very proud of this particular juncture in our development of this program. Uh, aside from uh, myself, of uh, the two key industry partners that were pivotal in getting together this program was Mark Egan and Jim Cates from the CISC Educational Fund Group. So without further ado, I'd like to call up our chancellor, Chancellor Joel Lager, and in turn, he will welcome you to the district and introduce the trustees that are here. On behalf of our board, uh, our faculty, our students, uh, staff uh, throughout the district, I want to welcome you uh, to this first uh, annual cybersecurity convention, or whatever we, we will call it, uh, at Merritt College. I, I want, um, I, I, we have our two trustees, uh, Trustee Bill Withrow and Trustee uh, Karen Weinstein, who will uh, address you, greet you as well uh, later. So I want to thank them. Uh, for the support that uh, they provide uh, to, uh, to you all. I, uh, I, one thing that I want to, to share with you is that uh, there are people that uh, I consider as uh, not only pioneers, but also saints uh, of, uh, of Peralta. Um, one of them is uh, the person you just heard from, uh, Ms. Anita Black, who is um, a retired faculty and administrator in the district. Uh, she really didn't have to uh, come back and help us uh, start a cybersecurity program. However, because it is in her heart, because it is uh, her mission to make sure that young people do well, that our employers get uh, the employees that they need. She uh, returned from, uh, while she's still uh, a retiree, um, she has come back and has helped us with this program. Having a program at the community college is uh, something that's uh, very difficult uh, to make sure that it succeeds. Because as a new, a new program at a college is like a new child who shows up in a family of many children. All of the siblings are looking and see which one is going to get, to get less food uh, to go to this uh, new child. Uh, and, and so you have to fight really hard as the mother of the program to make sure that your program get, gets what it needs in order to succeed. And that is exactly what uh, Ms. Black has done for us for the cybersecurity program that is really developing into one of uh, the, the best programs, not only uh, at, the, at uh, the college, the district, uh, the state, but also the nation. So uh, Anita, I want to express our sincere gratitude to you for what you have done, and please join me in thanking Anita for what she's done. The other person that we are so indebted to is Jim Cates. When, when he came, when he set up a time to come and, and chat with me about uh, the program uh, over a year ago, I didn't quite understand why he was so devoted uh, to the program. To start with, I thought that uh, he was an employee of the district and only to learn that uh, not only uh, do we not pay him uh, anything uh, to, to be an advocate for the program, we actually charge him because uh, he gets money out of his pocket uh, to help uh, the program succeed. And then he goes around and, and recruits his friends, and some of them he probably threatens if they have to help the program. 
Uh, so he is another saint, another angel for this program. And uh, Jim, from, uh, from the bottom of my heart, for the love that you have for the young people in this community, for the businesses in the community, for the security of our nation, I want to say thank you for all you do for the program. Would you stand up so people can uh, see you? I can only pledge to the two of you that as chancellor, I will do everything that I can uh, to make sure that we continue to support the program, that uh, when, uh, when it all said and done, that the program will continue to have the resources that it needs in order to be successful. So I want to welcome you all and I want to say thank you uh, to Courtney, who, who is uh, our wonderful faculty member uh, for the program. <laughs> Uh, the first one, and, and, and uh, we, anyway, we couldn't pay him enough to be uh, our faculty, and I want to say thank you, Courtney, for this uh, sacrifice that you are making to make sure that our students get what uh, they need in order to be wonderful security, cybersecurity uh, uh, pro uh, professionals uh, in the field, so thank you again. And at this point, I'll invite uh, Trustee Withwood to say hello to everyone, and followed by Trustee Weinstein. My name is Bill Withrow. I'm a, uh, a trustee in, in my 13th year with Peralta. Uh, trustees represent uh, the uh, community colleges, especially in our district, but we also represent the 650,000 uh, constituents that we have in our service area. But beyond that, uh, and especially as a business guy, I look at it from the standpoint of our contribution to society and uh, the contribution in terms of uh, timing. And uh, this particular subject is uh, absolutely on mark from the standpoint of what the country needs uh, throughout the country. And I, I'm very proud that uh, one of our colleges uh, is taking the lead uh, it, it's an area, it's not an easy area. Uh, I'm uh, president and CEO of a company called Pair Track Security Systems, and um, we have uh, state of the art, uh, very intelligent people working. Uh, but what we don't have is um, the ability, I feel, the ability to take very, very intelligent people, focus people, in the electronics area and talk to people who aren't real, knowledgeable, and experts. And um, to have a program like this at a community college level, uh, whether they're fed into the four-year degrees at the CSU or the UC level uh, or other focused colleges, uh, or leaving with an AA and going in as, uh, as a technical type, uh, I think it's very valuable for the, not only for the uh, students themselves, but for the community and for the industry and for national security. I'm a retired Navy captain and I can tell you that uh, there's just a lot of times that I reflect back on uh, our lack as a country of uh, security in terms of uh, the cyber area, if you will. Uh, it, it's very, very important. So thank you very much for all of you that are participating, for participants that are coming here and here from industry. Um, thank you for committing the time and uh, looking at what we have. And uh, hopefully you're going to be looking at the students that we have graduating from here. And uh, spread the word, word of mouth among your colleagues. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> welcome everybody. I'm Karen Weinstein, and um, as Bill Withrow said, he's here 13 years. I've been here two months. I am the new trustee on the block. And um, so I'm excited actually to be here. Uh, my goal is to get to know the students, get to know the faculty members, the administrators, um, and the colleges. And every time I come to Merritt College, I am, um, just amazed, number one, at how beautiful it is. It's just an extraordinary campus. Um, and I'm excited to be here today because I just think 
this is the most timely um, program that there is going on in the colleges. I mean, this is cybersecurity. What are we talking about? What's going on on TV? What's going on in our nation? So uh, I'm someone who pays attention to politics and the government. And um, so I'm particularly excited that this program exists here. Um, I'm happy that industry is here working with faculty and students to make this really successful. And uh, I just look forward to really learning about this program and being as supportive and as available and accessible as I can be. So thank you very much. Again, I'd like to welcome you all on behalf of uh, our faculty, staff, and students and administrators to Merritt College. I too am very thankful to the group of people who initiated and started this program. Um, as our chancellor mentioned, I work with people on this campus who are so passionate and committed to the students here at the college and in our community. But this group of people are like a pit bull with bone. <laughs> and I say that with, no, really. I mean, they lock on. They are so passionate. Mr. Jim Cates, Mr. Mark Egan, Dr. Anita Black, uh, Professor Courtney Brown, and so many others. But they are so committed and so focused on this particular program for our students and for our community. You couldn't find any commitment um, more worthy of, of, of noting that. And I appreciate what they do, what they go through. It doesn't always work out really smoothly, but they're still not giving up because they know what our community needs, they know what our students need, they know what this country needs. And to you, I wanna say thank you for being here because you're showing your commitment and interest as well. And together with Peralta Community College District, Merritt College, this program, and our community, you're helping us bring to them something they very much need. Um, many of our students aren't exposed to cybersecurity and some of the other new uh, trends in STEM. But they do know Facebook. They do know all these kinds of things, um, LinkedIn and Snapchat and all of that. I won't go any further because that, that's for the younger kids. But anyway, what I'm, my point is, is now they understand when they see that Facebook is having issues with cybersecurity, it's now becoming a little bit more personal. They're now understanding what that means. And now they can relate. And once you, if you've ever been on a community college campus or out in our community here, you can see the lights go on. Now they're saying, oh, they're connecting the dots. And you can help us continue that effort for our folks in the community to connect the dots, to get involved in STEM and cybersecurity in particular, especially. And that will help us, because it's gonna be a win-win for all the partners involved, particularly for our country. And I think that's what's really important. So together, with all of you, business and industry, with the Peralta Community College District, with Merritt College, and our students, it's gonna be a win-win situation. And as we say here at Merritt College, we're here because we change lives. And together we're gonna to do that. Thank you. I think I better get Jim up here in order for us to keep on our timetable. Jim Cates will welcome you and explain a few little other things. So I represent uh, SITES, stands for Consortium Information System Executives. And it's about 30 executives um, network of us that have existed in the Valley for about 10 years. And collectively over the years, we've donated um, $750,000, $800,000 to colleges via endowments. And so when we came uh, to the community colleges, we worked with four-year colleges, we worked with high schools, and, and now this is our time to work with community colleges. And so when I came here and I, and I met um, Professor Black, she was telling me she was just leaving. She says, well, we'll take your endowment, but it would be nicer if you helped us uh, kind of redesign our IT department. And so I went back and talked to Mark and talked to some of the site's executives, and I said, is this something we really want to do? You know, none of us are specialists in education world. And um, so we took that on, and that was 
April 2014. First thing we found out was that we had to get a degree. It wasn't a cybersecurity degree. And then we talked to about 30 companies, including the companies in SICE, working out the requirements that we needed. Then we had to translate that into the format that worked well for state uh, degree to be approved, which I really didn't know anything about, and I found out that's a lot of work. So they told us it was going to take us about four years to do that. So God, you, you guys, um, you, you, in other words, you ought to forget it. So Mark and I being corporate types, and my background has been R&D and IBM, so I'm used to taking on things that people say are kind of impossible. But this program has gone very well due to um, Mark and my effort and the way we had the split is that he runs the knowledge factory, which has <laughs> taken us about two years to get that together with, with no money. So we kind of went to talk to our network and convince people that it was give back time. <laughs> and we actually have 50 to 100 people in the valley helping us teach these classes. And so we do team teaching, which Mark can talk more about, but basically in these six week um, sessions, we're moving really fast because you only get 30 units. The other 30 units, if they get a degree, is general education. So we had to pack everything that the companies had told us they needed into these 30 units. And so Mark's decision was, okay, we'll just run double time. And so we're running double time. Um, and, and Mark will tell you more about the success we've had. My job was to uh, work out all the infrastructure, partnerships, politics, and all that kind of stuff which um, Mark calls lobbying, it stands for Ladder of Business Intelligence, which is a book that I've written. Um, so in the two and a half years, we've come from zero to where now we're graduating students, and I'm proud to say, make sure I'm true on this, Mark, one's been hired by FireEye. And so for those of you who know FireEye, that's a top. <laughs> Our students have worked really hard. We have a, a cyber club, and they came in second in the nation in the National Cyber League, beat 125 other schools. Now, the key thing here is what we're trying to create is what Mark and I call operational cybersecurity. That is, if you look at computer science cybersecurity, and I'm on Ohio State's um, advisory board, we have about 10,000 students largest computer science department in the United States, 1,500 majors. So I'm, I'm very familiar with computer science. What we're trying to create and what the nation needs as a 250 to 300,000 exposures is what we're calling operational cybersecurity. It's like the people who design the cars aren't the same as the technicians that maintain the cars. A lot of these, these hits that we're getting in companies is just basic skills. And that's what we're teaching here. And, and my take is that's the only way those jobs are going to get filled. In other words, the, com the computer science students are not going to fill these jobs that are open. So that means corporations, legislators, everybody has to rethink if we're going to get this solved. So with that, thank the college for working with us, sites for supporting us, and you guys for helping the, the um, recruiting and the uh, placement of the students that we're creating here, because I think this is just the beginning of a really needed skill in the United States. Thank you. Uh, Mark Egan, uh, the other third, is going to uh, introduce our panelists of students that will be giving a presentation, and I'm assuming taking some Q&A before we have the video conference with um, the congressman. As we talked about, uh, Anita, Jim, and I have been tag teaming on this. Um, and, um, uh, you know, Jim and I did this one time before, and we said, uh, unless we have somebody at the school that we can work with, we're not going to do it again. So um, we're really happy to have Anita. So a, a four-year approval program, Anita got it done in six months. So what, what, what I also want to do is thank many companies. As Jim mentioned, there's, there's got to be at least 100 companies who've come here. We based the program on the industry. What's the industry need? 
we came up with job specs for uh, cybersecurity staff. It was designed by security experts. And based on that, we backed into the classes. Uh, the classes are co-taught with industry folks. Um, so, you know, I'm really happy to say that, you know, we have the best, uh, the best security staff in the Bay Area, uh, arguably uh, the world working on this. So I do want to thank the many folks. I do want to, and, and Tim Mather in the back, my CISO from Symantec, special thanks to him. He did a great job. So we have a hard stop at one, so I'm going to get started here. What I want to do is, is just we have, um, we have students, we have um, uh, companies who have hired our students. So I'm, we're just going to go uh, quickly and, and, um, and just uh, have them provide some comments. So maybe first, uh, Carl. Carl's one of our infrastructure majors. So Carl, tell us a little bit about the program. How did you find out about it, and what's your experience been? I, I found out about the program. I heard um, I have a tech friends that's into technology, and a few years ago I was I had been in sales for like five six years, and I, I got to a point where I didn't want to sell anything, and so <laughs> I asked my friend. We were talking, and she said, "Well, you should you should look into infosec," and and I was like, "What is infosec?" You know, I didn't I had no clue what infosec was, and researching it, I came across the program here at Merritt, and it piqued my interest. Um, so maybe about a year or two ago, I, I started taking classes here, and it, it stuck with me. It, it really interests me. Um, the instructors are great. Um, you can, like, my instructors over here, I'm emailing them all night, and, and they get back to you. <laughs> you know, whenever, and it's, it's, I've just had a really, great experience here at the school and the amount of time and effort um, that these instructors and teachers have put in to me and the other students that I see as well. So. Super. No, th thanks, Carl. And then, um, and Nick, I, I think you're, you're an applications major, right? Yes. Grad grad yes, both both uh, Carl and um, Nick are graduating, so companies, you're looking for some, some, uh, somebody to hire, yeah, as well as Christina. So. They're all going to be uh, available here afterwards for questions. But please, Nick, go ahead. Well, how, tell us just a little bit about your experience with the program. Um, I a, am actually an automotive technician by trade uh, and realized very quickly that everything's moving to software um, by the ten to $30,000 that car manufacturers want to charge me for these opaque boxes that tell me what the car needs. So I started taking classes at Laney on how to code. Um, and they really weren't um, hitting the mark. I saw a flyer about this program here which indicated they were preparing you for an internship, uh, which I immediately understood meant they're gonna provide real world job training. And what I found here was rather than going over some really, really basic concepts uh, that I didn't see how applied in the real world, we were using actual tools that I could go and talk to people in the tech industry, uh, regardless of cybersecurity or not. And they would go, yeah, we use that. This is what we use that for. And yeah, that's, I've used that tool. This is, that's important. That's good stuff. Um, so the, the, the level of education here, um, most of it, if not all of it's been project-based. So uh, I'm going to be completing the program with uh, a portfolio of projects that I can say, this is, this is what I did, this is how I did it, and this is what I learned from it. Uh, so it's, it's been amazing. Okay, thank you. And Nick is also the um, president, aren't you the president of our, uh, our club? Vice president. Vice, Vice president, president of okay. the Bang Null Cybersecurity Club here yeah. at Merritt College. Um, yeah. yeah. Super. Th thanks, Nick. Um, <laughs> uh, Christina is one of our infrastructure majors. You want to tell us a little bit about your experience, please? Yeah. It's, um when I first started coming here, I really didn't know about the cybersecurity program. I had started taking classes over at Alameda College uh, just for some general IT uh, experience. I decided I had always done technical things at work, but I was never officially the IT person until probably my most current job, which is at a homeowners association. <laughs> um, doing that, though, I really wanted to legitimize the information that I, of the things I knew how to do. And one of the classes that I saw was advertised at Merit was for network and infrastructure and server infrastructure, I think. And I thought, well, I kind of work on both those, I, those areas, so I should take this class. 
So I showed up, and little did I know that was the first class for the uh, cybersecurity program. Uh, it was kind of a hard sell, but it was really easy to join up because it was just such interesting information. Uh, my technical skills, even though I had never studied um, specifically technical items, I took to it really well. Um, I enjoy the work. It's constantly changing, so you always feel like you're learning something new. And I really enjoy being at Merit because it's really taught as a cohesive group setting. It's not in, with everybody that's in the class with you, they work, you work together. We work with a lot of teams, a lot of you know, projects that you have to work with three, four, five people. And that's how the real world is. You're not gonna be out there just doing it on your own. And I think that really lends itself to what we're preparing to do as a new career. Great, Th thanks Christina. Uh, I'd, I'd like to in introduce uh, Shoki Lopez, a good friend, and Shoki's also part of our SICE group, uh, and Shoki's actually worked with, uh, with our students as well. Yeah, um, so we uh, are from Winty Family Estates. We're a hospitality and wine company and have a lot of um, security and compliance um, needs, and so we've hired two students as interns since the program started. And um, I think as Nick was saying, they uh, both came to the environment uh, really well grounded in the tools and concepts. And so um, the amount of orientation and ramp up time was really minimal, kind of hit the ground running, so to speak. Um, helped us do a lot of different things initially, kind of baselining our environment. And um, we um, included them in a number of kind of uh, maybe more uh, higher level um, security initiatives to kind of give them some more real world uh, experience that kind of overlaid some of the learning. Um, and I think that was good. I know both the students have gone on to work at um, tech and security companies and uh, we'll be looking to add a, a higher third this spring. Great. Thank, thanks, Shoki. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, uh, Sean actually works at Madison Navigation and has some very interesting stories as far as the security issues that they, um, they deal with at Madison. Right. Hey, everybody. Uh, so I work for Madison Navigation, Ocean Shipping, Transportation, Logistics. You've seen our white boxes with the blue logos. We're based here in Oakland. Uh, we also got an office in Honolulu. So I just want to say we've had a very positive experience. Uh, we have one, um, one student who is currently on staff and he's working in an information security analyst role for us. And when I, when I was looking for somebody to hit the ground running, I, I totally agree with Jim. I, on that rec, I didn't put you need three to five years of experience. Um, you know, you got to have a computer science background. I'm looking for somebody who actually has a, a firm understanding of the fundamentals and concepts of what information information security is and then how to apply that in a business and a risk-based uh, business such as ours and we were in interviewing a lot of different candidates um, the student from Merritt College from this program actually was one of the shining finalists and we decided to go with them so um, it just speaks speaks volumes about the capability of this program and how positive it's been um, for for us so just wanted to share that Great. Thank, thanks Sean <laughs> I wanted, does, does anyone in the audience have a question? I mean, we, we, um, we just have a few minutes, but I, I, I could ask the panelists more questions, but is, any, any questions for, for our panelists, please? We have a, we have a mic there. Uh, can you just say something about the type of projects that you work on, any of you, either the students or the industry? I'll go ahead and start. Well, the class that we just finished, actually with Asan and with Alan, was for, uh, it's called Hacker Guard Technologies, and it was really about AWS, which is the Amazon Web Services, and building an actual infrastructure for a business. So we were in a team, we had to determine what our business was going to be about, what the needs were, and then just in general having the different controls that you needed to put in as a security analyst in order to make that, that site secure. So we learned all the different elements that would be involved in that type of a project. Uh, we actually made it work. There was a website that came up at the end when we were finished. Um, the, me and my cohorts, we did over a six week period as, uh, as they've said how short the programs are, but it was really exciting and it was one of the best classes because it actually did something and you actually got to, your hands on it. You could fix it, you could make it work. So that was a great class. The, the, the other thing that I do want to mention is that we've actually had um, 
A number of companies donate equipment, so we actually have a cyber lab set up, you know, all donations from industry. And then, um, and it just the, you know, our instructors, you know, a lot, we've had many folks, you know, who've, um, who've taught at the program, um, you know, for, for free. You know, they're, they're, they're just donating their time. So there's a lot of people that we, um, we want to thank. And, and, and the, our, our kind of approach to the curriculum is, is that we want to have, you know, there's classroom uh, lecture, there's labs, and then there's the working. So we want the kind of combination of those three things. So you get the practical work experience. It is a requirement of the program that you have an internship for graduation. So that's something that you have to have as much as possible. Most classes are two credit lecture, one credit lab. So they're working in the labs, they're doing hands-on things and so forth, and then we kind of complement the three. And then, um, as, as uh, Jim mentioned, we, 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 you can get through the program in two years. We teach on Fridays from nine to three, and um, we do two sessions per semester. So the, the Fridays work with industry, you know, to get the industry folks in to teach. So that's, that's a little, little bit of the overview of the program. Um, I know I'm gonna get a hook here, so I'm gonna let Jim, Jim Cates has a really, um, a great announcement he'd like to make. Yeah, I just, this morning, an executive uh, coming in when I was coming in, committed to donate $5,000 to our cybersecurity club. Uh, his name is Saprit Manchanda. So what I want to do is I want to thank the panelists. And I guess the last, last comment that I have for just the audience, for those of you that are employers, we are looking for progressive organizations who want to solve the cybersecurity issue. We have a huge shortage of staff today. Our su suggestion is the four-year, a two-year program like Merit is the solution to, to that. You know, and, and, and we, we um, uh, maybe you go back to like the journeyman or, or trades and so forth. It, we can get you through in two years, give you the skills that you can go on and get a job. But we're really looking for companies that are more progressive um, and innovative in this because we have to solve this, this cybersecurity uh, crisis we have. I mean, there's just not enough people out there. So thank you for attending, um, and I also want to thank our panelists. And um, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll be around. All the students are going to be joining us shortly, so we'll actually have them all here. The class. This was, was our last class of the semester, so they were kind of actually doing their readouts and so forth. But all of our students will be here shortly. So thanks again. Appreciate you joining. It was the last class of the term. <laughs> we have another six-week session coming that's starting on the 24th of March. Um, before I turn it over to um, the individual that's responsible for getting um, Congressman Ro Khanna uh, to teleconference in, he's been an awesome addition to the team. Um, I wanted to also state that, yes, this is a two-year program, but make no mistake about it, we're also about advising the student to continue along their career path for a four year and beyond degree because by nature and globally, we're computer science. Cybersecurity is one spoke of the wheel under the larger umbrella of computer science. And that is definitely what uh, my successor, that charge is, and Courtney is very endowed with that charge, and his activities have been consistently about that charge in terms of the career pathway, building it out, both from middle to high school all the way up to the CSU system. All right, without further ado, I'd like to, to introduce the fourth awesome team member, Leonard Gaines. So we do have a couple of minutes while we're waiting for uh, Congressman Khanna. Part of this session will be um, the congressman will, will start with his opening remarks, probably about 15 minutes, and then we're going to open it up for Q&A. Uh, if you're having me via Skype, I'm sorry I couldn't join you in person. Uh, there were uh, votes today. Otherwise, I would have been happy to uh, attend in person. I want to just thank uh, you for uh, being here today and, and your leadership. Uh, I have been uh, so impressed by uh, the program at Merritt College on cybersecurity, and really have been touting that uh, as a uh, national model. 
Uh, as all of you know uh, better than uh, I do, uh, we have a real need in the country for uh, cybersecurity jobs, almost 240,000 cybersecurity positions uh, that are unfilled. And it's a issue uh, on people's minds in uh, Washington with the cybersecurity threats that our country has faced, uh, whether that uh, be with Russia or China or North Korea, potential interference in our democratic process, uh, or whether it be uh, cyber attacks uh, on our uh, national security or on companies. It's certainly a part of the conversation. And so we have a real need for uh, folks to go into careers with uh, a cybersecurity background, uh, whether that's serving uh, our nation or whether it's in the private sector. One of the things I'm so impressed with Merritt College is that they have rethought uh, the skills and needs uh, for cybersecurity uh, 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 folks. It's, no, it's simply no longer the case that you need a traditional four-year degree uh, to have a successful career in cybersecurity. And there's an organization, Opportunity to Work, that has been talking about rewiring labor markets. Uh, in other words, employers uh, need to think what are the types of skills and credentials that are going to be relevant for the jobs of the future. And uh, institutions of education need to think what uh, actual education or training are they providing folks uh, so that they get uh, employable skills. And that's where I think Merritt College has done an extraordinary job, a two-year program uh, for uh, folks where they're getting the actual skills that are going to help them uh, practically uh, be productive employees. And I think it's uh, uh, commendable that they have really focused on uh, practical skills leading to employment in cybersecurity. And it's really uh, commendable that all of you are here. By uh, being here, you're uh, signaling your interest, your commitment, uh, to rethinking hiring and hiring folks not just through a traditional four-year background, but hiring folks uh, who are going to uh, provide value add uh, in the field of cybersecurity. So I really appreciate uh, your participation. The second uh, part of uh, cyber of Merritt College program that really impressed me uh, is their commitment to diversity. Uh, the reality is that we, as a country, need to do far better in providing technology jobs uh, for women, uh, for African American, Latino communities, for places in rural and middle America that have been left behind. Uh, we can't have a country where uh, tech jobs, the jobs of the future, are available uh, to some, uh, but not to all Americans. And I think Merritt College's focus on uh, bringing greater diversity uh, into tech in the tech field, and that to one of the most critical areas of cybersecurity is really a model for the valley uh, and for the country. Let me end with this note. I'm headed to uh, come back home uh, tomorrow for a day uh, in the district. Uh, then I head to Appalachia in uh, Plainsville, Kentucky, uh, where I am working uh, on a program uh, with Hal Rogers, the uh, Republican congressman from there, uh, that is taking 100 coal miners' kids, uh, kids of coal miners and, and a number of others, and giving them jobs uh, $40,000 a year jobs uh, in tech. Uh, they go through a four-month training program uh, in iOS software or Android cloud uh, technology. Uh, it's, uh, and that leads to companies there hiring them at $40,000 uh, a year. Uh, hundreds of jobs have been created, and that's why I'm headed down. Uh, we need to realize that technology is the future in so many industries. And we have to provide those opportunities to all young Americans, not just those who grow up in uh, Cupertino or Fremont, where I uh, happen to live, but uh, folks across this country. Uh, that is the future uh, for our nation. It's the future in whatever field people choose. Uh, and by being at this conference, uh, I, you get the importance of that uh, for America. I was talking to someone who said that the new civil rights issues of our time are the new rights are actually technology rights and technology literacy. We need to make sure uh, everyone has that for the opportunity of the future. So let me thank Len and uh, let me thank Merritt College again uh, for your leadership uh, on this issue. What you're doing is local, but like the best local programs, it's going to have a national impact. And I certainly have been very impressed by your vision 
Let me thank all the conference participants for your vision in being there. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the congressman? Hi, Courtney Brown, uh, full-time faculty, computer science and CIS at Merritt College. And our program benefited from regional collaboration at Ohlone and Cabrillo in sharing infrastructure so the cost of delivering our classes is low. It's the NetLab's BACC infrastructure. How can we support collaboration on curriculum so we develop the regional capacity to fill all these cybersecurity jobs? Courtney, thank you, thank you. I can't think of a more important uh, profession than teaching computer science, so thank you for what you're doing. I, uh, uh, I'm glad to hear that you collaborated with Ohlone. It's in my district uh, in Fremont, and I completely agree with you that we need uh, to have a model of regional uh, cooperation on curriculum and ultimately uh, national cooperation. I think that our community colleges in California and in the Bay Area can actually uh, offer best practices and share practices across the country. Uh, it will not only help uh, lower costs, as you put it, uh, but it will also make sure people are educating folks uh, for the right skills, uh, for skills that are employable. I heard a, a community college uh, recently that was teaching folks how to replace hard, hard drives and, and put in new hard drive equipment. And uh, people were graduating from that and they didn't have jobs because the reality is those skills aren't relevant to employment. One of the things that I really admire about the Merritt College curriculum is it's uh, been based in collaboration and consultation with people in industry. So you know that the folks who are graduating from your program are actually gonna have jobs at the end of it. And it would be great to share that practice with other community colleges. I know Len and others are talking about uh, expanding the programs to, to more Bay Area community colleges, and certainly I will encourage uh, the community college leaders and the university leaders, I mean in the Bay Area, to work collaboratively and to look to Merritt College as a model for what you have achieved. Good. Well, I know Skype is a bit awkward, uh, so I don't, uh, uh, are there any other questions? Or I, uh, I, yes, I, we have I one coming up. Sure. Get on your way with the, uh, okay, I we have, have someone. Question. Um, my name is Maria Spencer, and um, coming on board as a student, as a non-traditional student before I began working here, some of the challenges for non-traditional students coming on board with uh, kind of a, a gap between education and workforce skills, we're coming and we're seeing a lot of students with that um, lack of ability to be able to, you know, master the computer technology world. So now that we have this wonderful program established here at Merritt, we've seen you know, um, some outcomes from it. You know, how do you see uh, the state, I wanna say, moving forward to pre, uh, prepare for us uh, with, with regard to funds? Because no one ever wanted to talk about how much it costs to run a program of this magnitude and be able to provide the services to students at a larger scale. Well, you're absolutely right. We need to make the investment in uh, in community colleges and college education in this country. I and mean, that's the biggest thing uh, I think we need to do as a nation is to, to make the investments in uh, workforce training uh, and education, and particularly education in not traditional four-year degrees, but education in senior year high school or two years of post-secondary edu education that's gonna lead to employment. Uh, we have uh, woefully underinvested in uh, workforce development in our country. We spend about 0.1% of uh, our GDP on that. Uh, and uh, this is, a, of course, a big debate in uh, Washington. I believe we need to be putting in far more resources uh, into education programs, into uh, community college programs, in helping make four-year public education uh, debt-free. Uh, I wish uh, the president, who uh, made his career on the apprentice would uh, have more programs supporting apprenticeships uh, across this country. Uh, so uh, th that is uh, something that is uh, really a thing we need to do. Well, thank you for that answer, and I'm hoping that some of our uh, students that are graduating from here can get placements with internships within your institution. So I'm looking forward to that. 
Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you for uh, speaking up and sharing your story. All right, do we have any others? Okay. Uh, yes, yes, sir, we do. We, we have a couple others coming up. Hi, my name's Sharon Mandel. I used to be in your district, but with the redistricting, I'm now in a new district. <laughs> um, work here in industry in Silicon Valley. Um, what is your advice for those of us who live here in our you know, bubble, so to speak, um, you know, with the divide that's in our nation? What can we do from here to help really drive the things that need to happen in the more rural, less technological parts of our country, other than to ask you for help? Right. I missed the last part of the question. To help, uh, to help do what, Karen? Help increase the, the education, the skills, the opportunities, the things that are there. I mean, one of the reasons we have this great migration to the Bay Area is because there's opportunity here. Yeah. And some of the great frustration in our country, I think, is that people have to leave their homes in other you know, wonderful parts of our nation in order to have those opportunities. So what is it we can do to kind of give back and kind of re rebalance that equation? I appreciate that, Sharon. I appreciate your leadership. And you're absolutely right. I mean, one of the things when you go to other parts of the country uh, that you hear is they don't want their kids to have to uh, leave uh, Pennsylvania or Ohio or Arkansas or Kentucky and come to Silicon Valley. I mean, they want to uh, have those communities there and have uh, jobs there and have their families there. I mean, we, uh, and uh, so what can we do in the Bay Area? Well, we've had a, a great tradition in California, of course, of, uh, of supporting community colleges of supporting uh, uh, higher education, of understanding uh, the need for STEM education. And I think that every, each of us uh, can uh, try to uh, see how we can help have communities that have uh, been left behind participate in this. That's close to home. There are a lot of communities in Silicon Valley that aren't uh, participating in the Valley economy. I mean, you don't go to East Palo Alto and you see that. You uh, go to parts in uh, Central California, and you see that. So we've got work to do even in our uh, local region. Uh, and then looking at places across the country where we, maybe our uh, expertise and models may apply. I mean, I'm hoping Merritt College uh, may adopt a community college in, uh, in a part of middle America and say, look at what we're doing. Can you maybe try the same program or a similar program and help folks uh, get jobs? Uh, let me end with this. I, you know, the the solution to, in my judgment, to the discontent, to the anger that we saw uh, in the last uh, presidential election is to provide hope and aspiration. People are uh, angry uh, because middle class wages have stagnated in this country since 1979. They see uh, the jobs they were doing no longer paying enough to sustain the type of middle class life that they wanted. It's no longer enough to, to buy a home, provide for the college education. Uh, of their kids to have a dignified retirement, have decent health care. Uh, folks feel that as the economy is changing with such rapidity, uh, they're being left behind. And we have to f figure out how do we provide the ladder of opportunity and social mobility uh, in all parts of our country that haven't uh, witnessed that, uh, whether that be uh, within the Bay Area or, or within the country. And I think Merritt College has taken a great a step, a concrete step, uh, in that direction. Like many things, the best ideas uh, are not in Washington. Uh, they come uh, from creativity outside Washington. And I think then the role of lawmakers is to highlight that and see how we can support that uh, by making that a more national model. So thank you again uh, to Merritt College for your Congressman, leadership. do you have uh, time for uh, one more question, you, sir? Uh, uh, to uh, all of the attendees for uh, your participation. Uh, and I look forward to really seeing how this program develops and how I can be uh, supportive uh, of what you're trying to do. Sir, thank you very much. We certainly appreciate your attendance. Uh, do you have time for one more question? All right. All right, thank you, guys. Right. Thank you, sir. My name is David Silver. I'm the Director of Education from the Mayor's Office. 
And uh, as Ethan said, uh, I lead out the Oakland Promise. Um, first of all, I just want to publicly recognize Ethan and his leadership, uh, as well as Merritt College and their leadership. If we could give a big hand to Ethan and Merritt College as well and the Peralta system. I, I also um, wanted to recognize, uh, you know, this is a partnership, the size partnership we're talking about is something that can transform Oakland to a place where all kids not only are able to graduate from high school, not only are able to graduate from college, but are able to be in one of the jobs of the future. As we think about what would actually transform Oakland, it's not about the jobs of the past, it's the jobs of the future. And fortunately or unfortunately, a lot of us know with what's happening in the federal government right now, with what's happening nationally and at all different levels, Cybersecurity is one of the things that is here to stay and is something that we have to get ahead of if we're going to be able to make sure that our country is in a place that it needs to be. And we want to make sure that it's not about having certain people have access to jobs. We want to make sure that our students in Oakland, our students who are most deserving of opportunities, our students in Oakland who are often furthest from opportunity are the ones who are going to have a pathway from Oakland Unified School District, the Oakland Public Schools, into Peralta System, into Merit, and then into jobs going forward. I see students here, I see employers here, I see people from Merit, from the district. This is what it's about. If one person actually says, hey, let's do this, it's not gonna work. If all of us come together and create a pipeline from when you're a person at elementary school all the way through college and into workforce, it will work. A little bit about my history and then about the Oakland Promise because this fits in as one of the key strategies behind it. First, um, I was a teacher in Oakland. Uh, I was a principal in Oakland. I helped found a school called Think College Now in partnership with the community in the Fruitvale neighborhood. Um, and I learned really early on that the type of opportunities that our kids had were not the opportunities that they deserved. Many of our kids in Oakland today, out of 10 kids who start out in Oakland in ninth grade, do you know how many are actually graduating from college within five years? Does anyone know? Out of 10? I see three here. Put it on your fingers. Two over there. The person with the video right there. The answer is one. One out of 10. That's not equity. That's not justice. We can and we must do better. So specifically, what we've tried to do with the Oakland Promise is say that we're going to put, uh, put our stake in the ground and say that we're going to take action to do better. It's not about talk. It's about action. What does that mean? We have taken evidence-based programs that have worked and put them all together from cradle to career to make sure that we can have what we believe is a model for the nation of a Promise program that truly supports kids all the way through the pipeline. What does that mean? Specifically, every baby born into poverty by the year 2025, that's 2,200 babies in Oakland, will have a college savings account of $500, and all of the family members of that fam, and, and the lead family member from that child will also have the opportunity for financial coaching, academic coaching, and another $500 for them to be able to address their near-term poverty needs. This is telling the people that traditionally are not accessing our economy that we believe in them and we're going to invest in them. Once those kids go to kindergarten, it goes from an equity-based program where we are focused on the most uh, deserving and furthest from opportunity to a universal program. Starting this year, every one of the 5,000 elementary school students that start out in kindergarten in Oakland Public Schools, district and charter, will be able to have $100 in an early college scholarship by the time they leave elementary school if they graduate from an Oakland public school. In addition, we're going to help them set up college savings accounts so they can make sure that they can invest as well, and we're going to match that. If they open up an account and deposit six straight times, they get another $100. And finally, we provide a college-going culture with launch events and different field trips to places like Merit at those elementary schools so that kids know and believe from kindergarten that they're going to college. The school that I was at, Think College Now, we knew that our kids were going to college, and even though traditionally 95% of those students were not going to college, 
31 of those original second graders, 31 out of the 39 are in college today. We know this can work if we set the expectation and provide the resources. Once those kids are done with elementary school, they go the third element of the program. We want to be able to intervene at every single level. In middle and high schools, we are going to provide places called future centers. That's where programs like the one that you're learning about today through SICE is, is going to be plugging in. Specifically, we are at seven middle schools and high schools across Oakland and providing college and career and internship support for our kids to be able to think about what is their future and have a map to make that happen, providing support for applications to college, internships, college scholarships, and other resources. And it's not just for the kids, but it's for the families. The results are in, and specifically at one of our high schools that we were at last year, Coliseum College Prep, which is in an area that traditionally does not have a lot of people that are going to college or graduating, 100% of those students filled out the federal financial aid forms, which is the highest um, in Oakland Unified history. We know this works if we invest in our kids. Once those kids go to college, that's where the partnership continues. Specifically, we have a, a partnership with Peralta where if you are an Oakland public school student, no matter where you're from, if you, you can go to Peralta, any one of the Peralta colleges, Merritt, Laney, et cetera, if you, uh, for the first semester free. So we are saying to students, if you can make that happen, we will support you. I want to publicly recognize we have a board member right here, if you could raise your hand, Karen, as well as uh, I saw Joelle Laguerre, um, the chancellor uh, here as well, um, as well as, I'm sorry, Bill, Bill as well, thank you. Um, for helping to make that uh, a reality. But it's not just about Peralta. It's also about other universities. Now, if you're an Oakland Public School student and you want to go to Cal State East Bay, you have guaranteed enrollment if you qualify with certain SAT and GPA. In addition to that, we have partnerships with seven historically black colleges to support our kids to make sure that they can have the pathway to go to college. And we have partnerships with the UC system and overall 24 universities. Finally, we're not just providing scholarship support, but we're providing persistent support. As I talked about in the beginning with that glaring statistic, it's not just about getting into college, it's about graduating from college. So each one of our students is going to be getting persistent support, such as peer mentoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring support, and other forms so that we can make sure that they actually complete post-secondary education. And then finally, that's where SICE comes in. We need to make sure that our kids have access to the jobs of the future. So this type of partnership that we are doing here is allowing us to make sure that we can fulfill our promise and that kids are not just completing college, but are going to be able to be successful in a career of their choice. I would encourage you, if you're a business leader and you want to get involved uh, with the Open Promise, you can go to openpromise.org uh, or you can see me after. If you want to get involved specifically with the key initiative, SICE, and you want to get involved with this pipeline, go to Ethan, go to other people, and and get involved. If you're a student and you want to get involved, we'd encourage you as well. This is something that if it's just about the mayor, it's going to fail. This is something that we need to unite our entire community around and say that all of our kids can and will succeed, and we're going to support them to do that. Uh, on behalf of Mayor Schaff, I just want to say thank you for inviting me and being a part of this movement. Thank you. Thank you.